Ahoy, friends. Welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a Chamberlain Racing Dory from John Gardner's The Dory Book, illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we're going to be out in the shop uh, working on the trim pieces for the rails. Uh, Got to bring some wood into the shop, and uh, yeah, I'll see what else needs doing out there. Next thing I guess we'll need to do is uh, see how this rail ended up gluing up. It's been uh, looking pretty good. Glue's been on, uh, clamps have been on for about three or four days now. I went away for the weekend, so as it turns out, it'll be as dry as it's gonna get. So we can trim this up a little, and then after that, I guess we'll see if we can uh, see if we got time to uh, get in on the back rails a bit, some of that stuff before uh, I jet off to work. You may be noticing this in some of these spots. There's some glue squeeze out from the top of the clamp down to the bottom, but these clamps are just popping off like crazy. Uh, part of that is that um, when uh, when I first um, started using these clamps regularly, I gave them another coat of uh, of a uh, windseed oiled uh, wood uh, wood treatment, and that really keeps the uh, that really keeps any sort of water-based glues from uh, adhering to them and does a pretty good job keeping out a, you know if you had something that wasn't even um, so much water soluble like it would probably do a pretty good job keeping epoxy from sticking to them as well i've also got the uh, jaws of these wax which will really help with epoxy um, you know you'd hate to Test it out and damage your clamps, but uh, but that is one of the negatives of, of the wood clamps versus either metal or plastic is they tend to be a little bit easier to glue to stuff. So. Looks like this uh, glued down nice and tight. See if we can't uh, see if we can't clean this up a little right along this edge. I'm gonna get a 90% of the way there with the plane. Um, 
just because we get some nails here. Um, now I could set these a bit deeper with a nail punch um, and then just plane the whole thing. Maybe I'll do that. We, got the, we have the technologies, so why not, right? That's the way we would do it in the good old days rather than rather than relying on uh, a belt sander to, to do it. That one's already set. So this is just uh, putting those nail heads below the surface of the rail a little bit so that the plane doesn't hit them. That should do it. Did this one too, just in case. Alright, now we can plane right down to that surface, surface without, uh, without hitting a nail. So the grain's starting to go in the other direction on this uh, <coughs> this sawn plate here. So
do is we'll put a little bit of a chamfer along the edge of this rail. That'll uh, keep it from getting damaged if a bore hits it or if, a, uh, if something impacts it. Breaking this edge will strengthen the edge because there's, you know, there's two edges and there's a substantially supported flat rather than just the sharp edge of the wood. The other nice thing about breaking this edge makes it much more comfortable to sit on, you know, where your uh, where your rear end is on here. There's not a sharp delineation as to where the seat starts and stops. It's a uh, more butt friendly sort of uh, surface. Just a sharp angle. So let's get the inside of the rail cleaned up nice. Now we can hit the outside edge. Starting in on the jib, but we'll be finishing up the mainsail as well. Starting in and finishing the jib. Uh, John was saying that one's going to be a quickie sail. So it's, it's so tiny, it's just a little handkerchief of a jib. Um, was it right around, uh, right around 45 square feet, I guess. So, yeah, there's not a lot there. It's uh, basically a balancing sail. If you notice any of the photos at the start of uh, our videos, actually not the red, white, and blue boat and not the black and white photos, but the uh, color photos of the uh, white hull with a black rail. That's another Alpha that we built a number of years ago. And uh, yeah, you'll probably be picking out the big long boom and the uh, large mainsail on that boat. So, um, that little handkerchief jib on the racing dory is uh, mostly a balancing sail for that big long boom. Just keeps the whole boat pretty much perfectly uh, proportioned as uh, she's headed across the wind. Um, and upwind, actually. And it just keeps her from it allows you to power up the main without the boat wanting to uh, get too much weather helm and spin up into the wind. So it's uh, definitely an important part of the rig. And on the early boats, that little jib 
was actually set flying, which means uh, it had a wire luff sewn into the sail. And uh, that meant that the boat didn't carry a forestay. It was uh, just simply shrouds. And when you put the jib up, you're putting up a forestay. When you tension the jib, you were tensioning a forestay that was sewn into the luff of the jib. So yeah, it's a pretty important part of the rig, and we're looking to looking to get that uh, get that started so that you know when we're ready to go in the water, and uh, we're hoping July sometime. And uh, you know who knows how much of the sail rig will be ready at that point, but definitely uh, we got her up, got to have her up and sailing for the schooner races. So. We'll be out there, uh, yeah, mixing it up with the big boys for that event. Um, I should have Centennial down there as well, so yeah, here's hoping it's a uh, an enjoyable weekend on the water. All right, so we got a little bit of a treat this uh, video in that we'll be taking the transom off the wall of the shop. Um, you may have been able to tune in for the last video, uh, for a previous video where we uh, took down the blocking for the stem. Release that from the uh, building bed and whatnot. So uh, this morning we're going to be freeing up the transom from these blocks, which are uh, nailed and clamped to the uh, to the wall of the shop. So you can see that's that's not going anywhere unless the shop wall does. Um, so these are also, these are keeping the boat from rocking on the bed. And uh, when we go to nail in the, um, when we go and go to nail in the, the, uh, the seat risers, we may clamp this back for a bit, but we want to get back here and uh, start shaping the transom sculling notch and uh, make room to put the uh, trim pieces on the uh, stern here. So we kind of got to get these uh, clamps and this board out of the way so we can finish cutting these, making these cuts for the proper shape of the transom. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just do it. There we go. Release to the transom from the wall. So, yeah, that's, that's free now. Get this wedge out of here. There it goes. Just a uh, little scrap of shingle that was in there keeping this this thing tight. And um, we've still got some plank ends on back here. So what we need to do is loosen this big clamp. Big number four, and uh, yeah, we got another clamp on the other side. So let's see. Oh, I see it right here. Gotcha. So there's that. Now you can see this is free from the wall. So when uh, when we get to the point that we're uh, ready to start making these cuts, we can uh, get this thing out of the way, and we'll be ready to we'll be ready to uh, shape the transom.
So there it is, that's the block. Now you can see now we can get in and around the transom area here to uh, finish up what we need to do back here, which is uh, make a uh, make the beading here pass by the transom and terminate right at the back face of it, end at the back face, and then. Uh, Cut the shape of the transom there with the sculling notch and all. So that'll be for a, uh, another video, but that's kind of an exciting little project we got going. Uh, the rest of the day today will probably be out in the yard. We've got some uh, bit of boat moving to do. Spring maintenance and whatnot. All right, so the other... Uh, projects we got going on and it's uh, a little bit of a letdown. If you'll remember we were getting so excited during the you know, freeze up earlier this year, last year, earlier this uh, winter season. But uh, yeah, it's time to uh, put the ice boat away. Not having sailed it all year, there were probably three days that I could have got out on it and just, uh, I was either working or had other stuff that it just, uh, that didn't happen. Actually, two of the days I could have got out on it were kind of marginal days where I wasn't a hundred percent about the ice thickness, but yeah, I'm having uh, seen it. I don't think it would have been a big deal, but yeah, didn't want to risk it at the time, so. Which is, well, after having had a bad experience one, uh, one early January, uh, going through the ice on the ice boat. <laughs> I've been a little bit shook about taking it out unless I was sure the ice was uh, you know, at least three inches, a good solid three, three and a half inches minimum. our next boat building project. Uh, got to do some rot repairs to the cat boat. So we got the the uh, bulkhead open. And for the summer. All 
All right, so on to the next project. So next thing we've got to do is get a centennial airing out for her uh, maiden voyage of the season. Yeah, not this coming weekend, but the next. We're hoping to uh, yeah, get out on the sound and uh, do a bit of sailing, do a bit of camp cruising, and maybe a little overnighting. So what I want to do is just, uh, <clears throat> we got a gorgeous day out here. So I'm going to pull back our tarp and see if any critters got into her over the winter. Start her airing out a bit. I ended up uh, actually leaving the hatch covers open this past fall, which I, you know, there's, I typically do just to allow for ventilation on board. Um, I found that if you cinch everything down, close everything up tight, watertight basically, which is one of the capabilities this boat has, you know, more or less watertight, um, then uh, there's the potential for getting a bit of mold aboard. So uh, it's not something I do. I've seen it in other boats. And uh, I actually had a pair of shoes get a little bit... Uh, I don't know if it was mold or just they were kind of damp or whatever. It just stay smelly on board when I had it closed up uh, during for a couple days during the summer. So I always try to keep it open to keep, that, keep any sort of damp and stuff in there. Yeah, so I guess uh, might as well give you a quick look at how the winter cover worked. Um, but yeah, you can see I got these sticks that come down to just over the, uh, just over or just to the rail on either side, tied in the middle. Um, and uh, so these help shed the snow. And you can see the hatch cover up there is open a bit. And I've got a screen over that, which looks like it's in fine shape. So no little critters get down through the screen. Yeah, so that's a good sign. Um, the other opening aboard, oh yeah, these, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video where we made up these little uh, skylights, these uh, deck prisms for the for Centennial. These are actually uh, recycled ashtrays, glass ashtrays, just glued in there and screwed down. Those work awesome as little uh, deck lights. So the stove cap has been on all winter, which uh, allows for air circulation up and out of the stove. And then the, um, yeah, if you look down in here, this, oops, this thing's in the way, but the, uh, the screen's been on the, uh, footwell as well, so there's a bit of air circulation in there. Now this hatch is the only one that's been closed. Definitely got the smell of, uh, old life jackets and 
Uh, there's some wood shavings and uh, and uh, stove wood in there too. So I'm getting a whole sort of medley of aromas out of there, but nothing foul. Um, yeah, so these are uh, sales by Emmett and Burnham, as I was saying. Uh, John and Harold made the sales for this boat as well as they're making the sales for the uh, for the Alpha Dory. This is the uh, boom crotch that holds the boom up while you're at anchor. So yeah, we're looking good. I'll uh, clip down the tarp so it doesn't blow away. And uh, you can see I've got a got a um, horse, little miniature horse in here to hold the mast up. And uh, when I get a chance, I'll move that out of the way and head down below and make sure that things are good to go down in the living area. But uh, yeah, we're looking, uh, looking like she's in good condition. Not really much, or if, if any, rust on any of the Galvi stuff. This is all in great shape, you know, oxidized and all, but fine working order, no rust there. No rust there. Galvi, uh, eye bolts um, our blocks look to be free no water on deck so the tarp did its job the winter cover held uh, the other thing is um, yeah they, these uh, these um, Shrink wrap remnants are excellent if you've got a smaller boat you're trying to cover. Uh, locally, we have a lot of boats being covered in the winter months and a lot of shrink wrapping going on. So uh, I'm actually able to get these remnants that are too small to cover a typical modern cruiser. Uh, I can get these remnants for free from uh, some of the guys down at the boat yards. So. Yeah, that's something to look for if you're looking to cover smaller boats. Um, and they're oftentimes they're happy to either sell it to you at a nominal fee or just give it away because a lot of the times with the remnants, uh, they're just throwing them in dumpsters anyhow. So you know, you're saving that much more um, trash from the landfill and uh, you know using using uh, resources more effectively as well. So, yeah, anyhow, getting ready to start the sailing season here in uh, Massachusetts. Thanks for tuning in to Building the Alpha Dory. Massive thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed, commented, and uh, contributed to the channel. And yeah, we couldn't do this without all the support, so... Thanks very much, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys all next video.